more from the program than they put in. So I'd like to introduce Patty Bruder, who has been with NCO over 20 years. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. I'm Patty Bruder, and I work for NCO in the Community Action. And um, actually, the concept of at least organized Community Action was um, put together by John F. Kennedy. And basically, they were looking at youth issues, and the federal government, the city of New York, and um, a private foundation, the Ford Foundation, came together to look at how could they deal with uh, youth issues in their community. And they found that organizing neighborhood coalitions and um, bringing neighbors, businesses, elected officials together was one of the most cost-effective ways of dealing with the issues. And it was partly because people in your own community know best what you need. And after JFK's death, uh, Lyndon Johnson had worked to declare, he declared the war on poverty and Sergeant Shriver wrote the legislation and then the uh, Economic Opportunity Act was signed. And there's community action agencies in every community. There's about a thousand nationwide. And NCO is the designated community action agency for Mendocino County. Originally we were for both Lake and Mendocino County and then we got enough population to become our own. And originally when our communities were designated community action agencies, it was done by the Board of Supervisors. Um, you guys had the opportunity to do the work in-house or designate it to a private nonprofit to do that. So some, some are run by counties and some <coughs> are run by private nonprofits, and that's kind of how we do it here. And so basically, um, we have some mandates from the federal government, and those are to fight poverty, to promote self-sufficiency, to feed the hungry, to improve social services, um, which is really about um, collaboration and working together and trying to spend our money in the communities the best we can to deal with these issues and also to engage the private sector and that would be people that are clients, business people, um, all of us together to be engaged in our community. So we spend time addressing policies and programs and activities that are related to poverty. And we have these six national goals that are similar to our mandates um, and NCO um, had made a decision uh, years ago to really focus on capacity building and working with other community uh, programs, agencies, and um, try to sort of flush out the needs um, and work on, on that aspect. Over the past, we've done a lot of different um, programs. We've worked on access to services. We've worked with the, well, when it was called the Department of Public Health. Um, we did a lot of work with community groups and looking at community assessments. We used the MAP process, which engaged community members talking about what their issues were. We helped with the Willits Integrated Service Center, uh, gaining um, public input about needs, and I think you probably remember us coming and talking with you about those needs. We helped bring dental services to the clinic in Willits. Um, we've supported projects like Photo Voice that gave teens a, a voice in the community and a way to get their thoughts and feelings known, and supported lots of different community um, projects. Sometimes we do little bits of money, like we were able to give Anderson Valley uh, once some money for child care for their uh, ESL classes, which made the difference between people being able to attend the classes or not. So sometimes a little bit of money makes a huge difference, and that's what we try to do. Um, so what we do is we do a community action plan, and in that plan we go out in the community, we get um, input from community members, we go to places like Plowshares in the community center and the coast um, community centers and sometimes hold some public meetings, get information at different uh, committees around town, and look at what the issues are continually. I guess we haven't been so successful that we've eliminated the, any of the issues, but uh, we keep working on them. Um, you know, housing, jobs, childcare, transportation, 
health care and access to health care have been continually issues that have come up over the years. What we're noticing more in the recent years is nutrition and food security, obesity, health issues are really rising to the front. Um, the cost of fuel, as we all know, affects the cost of everything, and those are issues that people are talking about a lot more. So one of the things that I spend a lot of time on is um, connecting with other uh, community groups and sits on lots of committees and those are just some examples of current committees that I sit on. Um, and then we run some in-house programs and we have the Catalyst program that is run by Michael Kisslinger and there's basically three parts to Catalyst which is the resource library that um, we can help connect people to grant resources. There's the Grant Resource Center, uh, there's a lot of periodicals, information about how to start a nonprofit, how to manage a mo nonprofit, those types of things. We do a lot of training. These are some of the examples of some of the training, uh, leadership, governance, volunteer management, decision making, outcomes. And Michael works with lots of uh, nonprofits. And then there's technical assistance kind of activities, um, help meeting facilitation, do some strategic planning, um, you know, program evaluation, those types of things. And then he also has a help desk where people can call and, and get some immediate assistance. And these are some of the examples of people that he currently works with. And then we have the volunteer programs, which are part of the community action program, and those are run by Tammy Bartlemy. And um, currently we have over 1,180 volunteers serving over 45 agencies. And um, of those, 538 of the volunteers are RSVP, which are over 55. And they logged 96,321 hours last year, which is uh, a pretty significant contribution to our community. Um, she also organizes CERT trainings throughout the county and actually she's not here right now because she got a call to um, start organizing some volunteers for some of the efforts around the fire and so people are signing up to assist and she's going to help connect them to where they may be needed. And um, the human race is one of those projects and this year the human race was uh, held on May 10th and over 500 people walked and over $50,000 were raised for um, many nonprofits throughout the community. It's an attempt to do a major fundraiser to sort of let people know what agencies are out there and have everybody have an opportunity to raise some money. And she's currently doing some work with Flex Your Power and um, bringing some awareness to some of the um, power some of the ways to save um, energy and one of the things that we often do and we're getting more and more requests for it lately is to ask act as a fiscal agent um, for some of the small little projects around town um, and like currently we just acted as the fiscal agency for a grant from the Community Foundation, which is connecting, it is, it's kind of a real work for food program, which is kind of fun. Um, people are able to donate some of their time in community gardens, school gardens that help those gardens, and in return, they can earn up to $20 a week um, in a voucher that will be spent at the farmer's market. So it has a, a wide range of people it's affecting. It, it helps the people get good quality food, low income people. It helps the farmers. It keeps a little more money local, um, all of the things that we try to do. Um, another area that we've gotten involved in this year is, or last several years is sort of the localization movement. And one of the reasons why we have gotten involved in this is there's many active community members, which is part of what we do. Um, there's that goal of self-sufficiency.